Welcome to this latest edition in our Critical Economics series with Professor Steve Keen. We're very pleased that Steve has given us some of his time today and his very busy schedule and is actually in the, the hall of a university holding up his laptop to do this with us today. So, Steve, thanks a lot. You're welcome, Andrew. Steve, I know you're acclimatising to life in the UK and really that's where I'd like to begin the conversation today. We're hearing a lot from the British government in particular that there is the green, the green shoots of recovery and that the UK is one of the golden boys in terms of economic progress and that austerity is working. Steve, is this analysis that you share, bearing in mind I know your very prescient and keen interest in the housing market, which is alleged to be fueling this so-called economic growth? Yeah, it's not austerity that's giving anyone the boom, it's the housing uh, recovery, and the housing recovery is driven by what I prefer to call uh, help to sell, uh, the government scheme that gives money to first-home buyers, which actually then basically fuels uh, the sales of purchases by first-home sellers because those first-home buyers go to a bank, the bank gives them the leave it amount of their money they've actually got from the government, maybe 10 times if the loan to valuation ratio is, uh, is 90 percent, higher if you get a 95 percent loan to valuation ratio, and that money is being injected into the economy and then spent and is causing a general boom around the economy, which is counteracting the negative impact of the government's austerity programs. So if you really want to do a comparison, say what's actually making England uh, revive rather while Europe is going down, uh, you see Europe is running austerity programs and what's the success rate over there? Zero percent growth of the overall uh, European uh, uh, continental economy, 27 uh, percent rate of unemployment in Spain, uh, similar in Greece, enormous unemployment in uh, Italy and France and even Germany is not growing right now. What they have of this austerity in common with the UK, what they don't have in common with the UK is the restarting of a housing bubble. So uh, I think that little comparison alone gives you an idea of what's going to help the English economy revive. It really is all being driven by the borrowed money driving housing, which itself has been sponsored by the, uh, by the government's uh, scheme to encourage first-hand buyers in. Thanks for those comments, Steve. And really just to pick up on the point that what you seem to be inferring is that the situation in the UK is actually even more serious than in Europe because while austerity is being pursued, we have this inflationary bubble once again being ignited within the UK economy, which I know you're very concerned about if that bubble indeed crashes in the way it has done in the past. So we're having double the the hit in terms of negativity. Could you just share a little bit more about your views and the dangers of this housing bubble in conjunction with austerity? What the hell? The housing bubble works because people borrow more money. I can't talk, sorry. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm in a call centre now talking in front of a grid students for Kingston. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, they're trying to talk to me as they uh, walk up and down the corridor. Um, yeah, the, the, the the housing bubble is it only works on as it continues growing and to continue growing normally what you need is more uh, private debt being taken on more mortgage debt and ultimately you get to the situation where the mortgage debt compared to the incomes is so great that people stop uh, increasing their borrowing and then of course the economy plummets when the rate of growth of debt turns negative now that can actually be counted in a country in a city like london and also of course a city like the one i just escaped sydney where you have enormous levels of buying of property by overseas buyers. And that's, uh, you know, it's open slather to buy uh, properties for foreigners in London. It's equally open slather to buy new properties in Australia. And the rules against them buying existing properties are enforced about as strongly as, I don't know, as, uh, well, I, I could think of a pretty revolting analogy, so I won't go with it. But the, the rules to stop them enforcing are, are just completely ignored. So uh, you have open sites effectively in both cities. And because you have people trying to hide uh, wealth from uh, uh, what they managed to from spy in uh, parts of Eastern Europe and parts of, uh, of uh, the Arabian Peninsula for London, and uh, people also trying to potentially escape massive levels of pollution in China and potential 
political instability. Those two enormous sources of revenue coming into the country can keep this bubble going on for quite some substantial time. So it breaks away from the, uh, the usual argument I'd used that ultimately the debt dynamic will bring you on side. Now that raises a different problem, of course, and that becomes that ultimately it becomes impossible to buy a home in your own country. And that's certainly what's been coming uh, the case in, in Sydney with, in, and in Australia in general with the rising prices down there courtesy of our bubble, driven by low interest rates and this open flood of the policy for foreign buyers. And the same thing is happening here in London. And um, so you, I think in some ways this is turning from an economic issue into a political one because ultimately you're going to say, do you want England to be the place in which the English can afford to buy houses? And the answer, the way things are going at the moment, they ultimately be no. Steve. I want to thank you for your contribution. I don't want to take up any more of your time because I know your biceps and triceps are tweaking there with the weight of the laptop. It really only <laughs> leaves me to thank you for giving us some of your wonderful insight as always and get back to the gym, my friend, and build up those muscles so we can have a longer chat the next time. Well, then, mate, I might also get people to go to their... Uh, their uh... Uh, A-level students or students at the universities which are uh, dissatisfied with the economics they're being taught already uh, in their courses, uh, pick up that phone and call Kingston's Clearing Centre because we're, uh, we're the one centre in the country which is dedicated to a non-orthodox approach to economics. And that's very pleasing to hear some, something that is extraordinarily necessary to break away from this neoliberal orthodoxy. Steve, thanks a lot, mate. You're welcome. Bye-bye.